Jesus. Come on. That great name. Hallelujah. That great name. There's no other name greater. There's no other name greater. There's no other name greater than that great name. Come on. Hallelujah. Come on. You were born for this. We was born to worship him. Come on. We was born to adore him. Come on. Something happens. Come on. Something happens. What we call that great name. I can't hear y'all. Something happens. Hallelujah. What we call that great name. Because we was born to worship. We was born to adore him. We was born to bow holy to Jesus. Father, in our bones, God. Come on. Father, let this be life changing. Glory. Father, we were born for this, God. Come on. We were born for this, God. Glory, glory, Father. Glory, glory. Come on, y'all. Hallelujah. Father, we were born to worship God. Hallelujah, Jesus. 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 We are. Come on, y'all. Yes, God. We were born, Father God, to worship you, Father, to adore you, Father, to give you honor, to give you glory, Father. We were. Father God. Father, we live to worship God. Father God, every breath that we take, God. Father God, it is yours because we live. To worship you, God. We live to worship you. We live to what you want to hear, Father God.
which they have never experienced. So they find themselves in an unfamiliar territory, unfamiliar spot, unfamiliar location. Why? Because this is me. I believe this. And you let me know if it resonates with your spirit. Because I believe it was so unfamiliar because they had an agreement with God. Oh, come on, come on, come on. <sighs> because I believe they were meeting at a certain place. They had an agreement. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Come out here. And this particular time, they did not keep their agreement. Oh, wow. So God had to look for them. Where are you? Because I'm expecting you to be at a certain place because this is not where we normally meet. Come out here. Come out here. Ah. Mm. Let me give you an example. I'm married. And so what if my wife and I had made the arrangement to meet at a certain place and I failed to show up? Her next response would be, where are you? She would begin to call. Why? Because we have made an agreement to meet. And so here is God looking for Adam, and I believe he's never had to look for them before. They have never had to hide themselves. They have never experienced the spirit of fear. So when someone, you have, okay, listen to this story. When someone, you have to, uh, to agree to a meet, and if they come looking for you, then that means you have to be accountable for your way of us, for your location. So therefore, when God said, where are you? It required Adam to be accountable. To where he was. He had the answer. And listen to this here. Oftentimes we are at a place we didn't think we could be in life. And so when that happens, our next response is we ask, How? How did I get here? And as we stated on last week, it's not so much how, but your location is the result of your decision in life. Think about it. You just don't end up anywhere. You decide to be there. That's right. But I want you to listen more closely to this story. It's not how, but who and what we what made me decide to be where I am. Let me say that again. Yeah. It's not so much how did I get here, but what was the reason that I'm here? In other words, what was the cause? Mm -hmm. Who made me? That's right. Come on here. Mm -hmm. What was it? In other words, what was the motivator? Of my decision. Right. What was the motivator for some people decide to come to church and others decide not to go to church? What was their motivator? Come on, come on. Oh. Come on. Listen to this. I'm laying the foundation. It won't be so much of what we did to the fact of why we did what we did. That's, right. yes. That's the motivator. Come on. Yes. They took the food, but why did they take the food? Right, right. Mm. That's good. That's good. That's good. See, we emphasize on the fact that they right. ate the food. Right. But God was looking at why did right. you do it? Oh, yeah, that's good. Mm. Come on. Matthew 7 23 says this. And then I will declare to them publicly, I never knew you. Depart from me. You are banished from my presence. You act wickedly disregarding my command. This is Jesus talking. Then I want to read this out of the message, message Bible. This is what it says here. Master, we preach the message. We banish demons, our super spiritual projects, and everyone had everyone talking. So 
Sound like a church judge. Yeah. Ah. And he said this, his reply. Do you know what I'm going to say? You missed the boat. All you did was use me to make yourselves important. Listen to that word. And you didn't impress me one bit. And so when I look at this, I said, wow. What came to my mind is, let's go back. The verse said, you notice this word several times. It said, we preach, we banish, we had everyone talking. But Jesus said, you make you use me to make yourself new. And we as a church have to be careful because a lot of times we say, oh, we're doing this. Oh, we're, you know, we're doing this in the community. We, we, we. And let me say this. I know I might not get a lot of likes on this. That's okay. We cannot do nothing without Christ. Yeah. So if he gives you that, if, if, if you're doing something, guess what? He gave you the idea. Come on, yeah. But in this scripture, they were trying to take credit for themselves. Yeah. They were trying to make themselves look good mm. at the expense of Jesus. And I believe that's the problem with some of our churches today. We're trying to be more impressive instead of impactful. Wow. Well, that's good. Well, look what we done. Look what we built. How many of you running? Y'all, how many of y'all doing in y'all service? What's what you got going on? What are y'all doing? Instead of what the Lord is doing through us. So we can't get caught up in wanting to impress at the extent of pleasing God. Because I believe that's the problem with some of churches. We're so impressive. We want to be, we want to impress for how much we know. And as the scripture said, Jesus is not impressed with that. Right. If you get a revelation, guess what? God ate you. That's right. That's right. That's right. So the question I have, who has more impact? You or God? Mm. Yes, I can sit up and say, well, Peter walked on the water. If you want to walk on the water, all you got to do is get a boat. If you get a boat, just take it by the shore. Help yourself. And then what y'all do? Y'all stand up. Huh? Then when you take your boat to the shore, <laughs> all you got to do is listen to that word say, come. And all you got to do is step out of the boat and come. But guess what? If you step out of the boat and come, you're going to drown because you don't have a life jacket. Because the word was the life jacket for Peter when he stepped out on the boat. <sighs> and then y'all stand up and say, oh, he preached. We had church. Then you go out and do the same stuff. Commit adultery. Hold on. Come on here. Come on here. Because you're caught up in being impressive. <laughs> so now, last week we talked about three letters that pertains to your location. P, P, S. Number one, P was your position. Two, P was your place. And three, S was the situation. So anytime you have, or as it applies to your location, keep those three things in mind. Yeah. So number one, what is your, your position? That's where something is located. In other words, your stance. The Bible said they hid themselves. How? In the, among the trees. That was their position. Then, number two, their place. It was more specific. It has to do with a particular spot. They were among the trees. I believe there was a certain tree they were among. It wasn't any tree. 
Why? Because they ate your food from a, from a particular tree. Right. And thirdly, their situation. They were naked. They were afraid. That was the outcome. Uh, so now, let's get into this here. Genesis 3 and 5 says this. And this is where we're going to go. The serpent told the woman, you won't die. God knows that the moment you eat from that tree, you will see what's really going on. You will be like God, knowing everything, waiting from all the way from good and evil. So now, I would have a problem if I saw a serpent talking to me. Come on here. Well, Number one. <laughs> we can't have that conversation here. I don't see any of the other animals doing it. What's up with you? I done went back to the creator. But like some of us, we think we can take it in our own hands. So now, let's look at these three letters distinctly. The PPS, look at, I want to just look at the effects of this. The cause and effect, as it relates to yeah. Genesis 3 and 5. Mm -hmm. Number one, give you three points, we're going to get out of here. Number one, it was the status versus obedience. Mm. Come on. Mm. Come on. Mm. The serpent says, you will be like God, and you won't die. Oh, okay. So now they got to make a decision. I eat this fruit, it's going to give me status. Because I want to be like God. Mm -mm. Or shall I do I obey God? Which one? Lord, because my. as you know in the scripture, God said, you can eat from any other trees in the, in the midst of God except that particular right. one right there in the middle. So now they, they had to come to make a decision. Do I want to be important? Or am I not going to obey God? What am I going to do? So number one, status versus obedience. Think about it. As it relates to your location. Number two, it came, came down to a place of risk, which was their determination. The scripture says, the moment you eat, that was a place of risk. The moment. Because God even told them, the moment that you eat from this tree, you will surely die. But what the enemy said, you won't die. The moment you reach from that, you'll be like God. You know everything. Mm. So the question is, what are you willing to to do to get to where you want to be. Because Adam and Eve was willing to risk, but they didn't know they were risking. They was willing to risk to be like God or to try to be like God. So it was a place of risk. And anywhere you are at any given moment, there's some risk involved. Yes. And then third, will it be right to where you are? In other words, am I in the wrong place? That's right. There should be a song, I'm in the right place. What's that? I know I'm in the right place. Some of y'all help me out here. What's that? Yeah, I'm in the right place. I don't want to be in the right place for a long time. Or something like that. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Amen. But the thing is, you want to make sure you're in the right place at the right time. Yes. Good. Come on. So number three, will it be right after all that has taken all place? Right. What, was it right for Adam and Eve to eat the fruit? Mm -hmm. 
Y'all know the answer to that. Come on, hit And so when it came to that thought, knowing everything that ranged from good and evil, was it God's intention for them to know that? Did God want them to know everything that ranged from good and evil? Come on here, Pastor. Because I don't know about you, we were never called, we were never created to know everything. Come on, sir. But some of us want to act like we know everything. God is the only one who's omniscient, which means all knowing. And look how the enemy tricked them. Said, You would be like God. Did not sound like him. He said, If I would be like the most high. So, in essence, there's only one God. And guess what? You and I are not called to replace him. Not at all. Not at all. Not at all. Come on here. But we are called to represent him. In other words, exemplify his nature, his character. Wow. What does Genesis 1 and 26 say? And the Bible says, they said, let us make man after our likeness, after our image. So, guess what? Two gods. It can't be two gods. It was one God. Existed in three persons. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Right. That's why he said, let us make right. man. Come on. Come on. But you got man trying to make man who Come think on. man is God. Oh, yeah. The devil is a liar. And the place we need to be, we need to be where we represent him. For the Bible said we are his ambassadors, his representatives in the earth. We not to think like we him. That's right. Like we can recreate and reclone and redo oh, all this. Oh. No. But that's how we think, some of us. Right. Come on. Because if we have that mindset, what are we saying? That I don't have to answer to no one. Oh, yeah. And guess what? God is the only one who don't have to answer to nobody. Come on, teach me. I remember our late bishop said this, and I'm coming to a club. Okay. Every day you let God be God, then you don't have to try to be God yourself. <laughs> yes. But how many of us are trying to be God? Come on. Well, I don't need to ask nobody. I'm my own man, I'm my own woman. I can do whatever I want, how I feel. I don't have to answer nobody. I don't have to be accountable. After all, I'm grown. That's right, teacher. If every day, listen to this, you let God be God, then you won't have to try to be God yourself. Why? Because to do that would be blasphemy. Mm. Idolatry. Because what you're saying is look at me. Oh, I'm going to get in trouble. Oh, okay. But there's a scripture Come on. in Psalms 82 which says little gods and I believe many of us have got that mixed up. Little gods. Well, y'all might just y'all might just shut me off now. That's okay. I'm not. I'm not. No, you go ahead. You guys. I feel about the spirit of God. Now, we're saying, I say Psalms 82, we say little gods. And some of us has taken that and ran with it. Come on, come on. You're saying, well, I'm just like God. Come on. I can speak it. Come on. It comes to pass. Come on. I can name it, claim it. I can pay it, whatever. Talk about that. That's the faith move. Teach, teach, teach. Hmm. Well, then if I'm God, then why am I going to die? Because right. God cannot die. Right. Mm -hmm. well. mm -hmm. And the Bible says that he made us a little lower than the angels. Right. Mm -hmm. 
So we got to stay in our place. We got to know our place. GPS. And let me say this. God does not worship himself. He does not. Are you ready you and I? Which means he ain't stuck on himself. He knows who he is. My God. So he created us to worship him. Because he said, if I'm your Lord, we is my honor. God is not short on praise. He's not. No worship. He just gives us the opportunity. Come on. Come on. And I close with this story. Because if you and I think we are God, then there will be no room for God himself. And God will never find himself unnecessary. He will always be necessary. So, what is your location? Are you where you're supposed to be? Right now. Does God have to come looking for you? Where does God want you? Hmm. That's a good question. Because the Bible says that we are not to forsake the assembly of ourselves together right. as the manner of some is. As we see that day approaching. Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. And that day is approaching. He's on. on his way back. And it's important that we are where we should be. That when he comes, we can go. So what is your location? So, for those of y'all who are outside of Christ, he's calling you today to get in place to where he is. Because the Bible says that Jesus said, I go to prepare a place that where I am, you may be also. But we can't go if we don't know him. And so my plea to you today, if you don't know Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, today is your opportunity. Today is the day of salvation. Don't harden your heart. Because God loves you. And he wants you in the right place. And the safest place in the whole wide world is in the will of God. So all you got to do is confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God is raised up from the dead and you shall be saved. By saying, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. I recognize that I'm a sinner and that I've fallen short of your standards for my life. And I ask that you forgive me of my sins and I repent of my sins. And I ask that you come into my heart and be my Lord and Savior. If you said that, guess what? You are saved. Because the Bible said, if you call on the name of the Lord, you shall be saved. And the angels are rejoicing. I celebrate you on this morning. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Because that's the greatest decision anybody can make is to give their life to Jesus Christ. And that's the best, best place you can ever be is in the arms of Jesus. Hallelujah. So we thank God for you for making that decision. Also for some, you say, Pastor, I'm not in my right place, but I want to get in my right place. And, and Father, I pray that you will lead and guide them to where they need to be. Because the Bible says the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. And he delights in his way. 
So let God order your steps this morning. Let him direct you. Acknowledge him in all your ways. And he said he will direct your path. Make it straight. Make it smooth. Remove obstacles. Yes. Hallelujah. So those for salvation, those for rededication, we honor you. We bless you. Type it in the comments. I'm all in. I'll be commit. I'll be dedicated. Yeah. I'm coming to my right spot. Yeah. And that's in Jesus Christ. And so we thank you on this morning. We celebrate you. We honor God for you on this morning. Hallelujah. And this time, this is the opportunity for you to sow. Lord, the word of God touch your heart and we bless you on this morning. This is your opportunity where you can sow into faith Christians today. It doesn't come to me personally, but it allows us to keep to stream and, and try to be impactful in our cities for the glory of God. And you can see three ways where you can sow into the ministry. Amen. You can sow to our cash app. Capital Dollar Sign, Capital F, CC, Lowercase Church. You can also type to our giver block. Your know, Faith Christian Center Read Bill. Also, you can text the give 336 585 8830. So, whatever God lays in your heart, because the Bible says God loves a cheerful giver whose heart is in his giving. Amen. And giving is never a loss, but it's always a gain. Amen. Hallelujah. Again, we thank you for this time. We thank you for. This time of gathering. May God bless you and may heaven smile upon you until we meet again. Amen.